In this part of abridging, we're going to look at linear simultaneous equations, and you would have come across these before. Now, this video will be fairly short because I've done quite an extensive, what I've called one-stop tutorial on linear, linear simultaneous equations. So we'll link that off as well. But essentially, we need to get this 100% uh, sorted. You'll be doing uh, simultaneous equations when you don't even know you're meant to be doing them in A-level. They occur so frequently and allow you to access such higher... Um, level topics but they just come as second nature after a while and rather than it being a standalone topic where you're tested you just use them. Now with the linear ones we can use two methods elimination or substitution. The elimination doesn't work with non-linear ones so for example if we have a quadratic and a linear or we have um, a circle or we have some form of non-linear. We'll practice both, we'll look at a couple of harder examples, but generally I refer you back to the one-stop tutorial where we look over both methods. So you've got elimination and substitution. We'll start with um, an example. Now, in um, A-level maths, it's often that they won't come up as what we call integer solutions. Integer whole number solutions. So before they used to drop out perfectly and everything was oh so very nice. Um, but often you don't come up with um, the integer solutions and we have to deal with that. So let's look at the first one. Now what I'm going to do is the following. If I wanted to use elimination I could take the choice of multiplying the top one by three and then subtracting downwards because I'm making the x uh, coefficients the same. I could double the bottom one and then make the y coefficients the same and again subtract downwards. What I'm going to do is multiply equation 1 and we'll label them up. We'll label them equation 1 is going to be x plus 2y is equal to 5 and then equation 2 3x plus y is also equal to 5. If I now multiply equation 1 by 3, I will have 3x plus 6y plus 15. And that's now equation 1. Equation 2 can remain the same. 3x plus y is equal to 5. Uh, that should be equal to 2, shouldn't it? That wasn't equal. The goal of elimination is to make either the x's or the y's the same. At this point, if the sign in front of the one that we're doing, and of course these are going to be positive, if the sign is the same, we subtract downwards, and thus eliminating, as we'll see. If the signs are different, we add them together to eliminate. So let's just uh, subtract downwards. So if we do one minus uh, equation 1 minus equation 2, we'll have 0x's. We'll have 5y, and we'll have 10. So from this, we can see y is going to be equal to 5, Oh, uh, 10 over 5 and y is equal to 2. We simply substitute that back into either of the equations and generally the easier one or this one, that one's perfectly fine. So 3x plus y, well y is 2, 3x plus 2 is equal to 5, 3x is equal to 3, subtracting the 2 from both sides and we can see x is equal to 1. And we check that that satisfies both of the equations. Now, that's elimination. If I'd chosen to do substitution on that one, I'm more than entitled to do that. Now, what I'm going to do is the following. I'm going to make x the subject on here. So what I'm going to say is x is equal to 5 minus 2y. What I've now done is made x a subject to the top one, and that is equation 1. I can now feed into equation 2 any time I see an x, this expression right here. So I can see that I've got three x's. So equation two, I'll have three x. Well, x can now be written as five minus two y. And that's going to now have another y added to it. And that's going to equal five. So by substitution, I've eliminated all of the x's from here. So now all I've got to do is simply expand the brackets. 15 minus 6y plus y is equal to 5. So I'm going to have 15 minus 5y is equal to 5. Add 5y to both sides, subtract 5. 10 is equal to 5y, and y is obviously equal to 2. And then I can simply substitute that back in. If y is equal to 2, 
5 minus 2 lots of 2 is 5 minus 4 and x is going to be equal to 1. And again we choose that. Now on that example I could have done anything I liked. I could have made y the subject of the bottom one. So let's do that. If I'd made y the subject of the bottom one, equation 2 would be y is equal to 5 minus 3x. Now I can feed that into equation 1 every time I see a y. So I've got x plus 2y. Well, y is now 5 minus 3x. Okay, and that's equal to 5. So expanding that, I'm going to have x plus 10 minus 6x is going to be equal to 5. So minus 5x, so 10 minus 5x is going to equal 5. Subtracting 5 from both sides and adding with 5x, 5 is going to equal 5x and x will equal 1. Substituting that back in, what we're going to have now, if I uh, work out the following, if I put x back in, what we're going to get now is we'll see that 2 gives us exactly the same value as before. Okay, So y is going to equal 2 as we've shown in both cases. The one in which you substitute is, is purely down to what makes things easy for you. Um, for myself, I just you know, go on based on what looks logical. On this one, I could make x a subject and write 15 minus 5y. The second method I've used, I use elimination here and I've used substitution here. The advantage with substitution is it can be done with the non-linear ones, which we will look at in later tutorials. Okay, so let's now deal with something down here. Now, this one right here, I've got the following. 1 half x minus 1 half y equals 0. 1 third x plus 2 thirds y equals 10. What I'm going to do to begin with is call that top one equation 1, and I'm going to multiply the whole equation through by 4. If I do that, I'm going to end up now with 2x plus, uh, sorry, 2x minus y is equal to naught. Multiplying the whole thing by 4, 4 times a half is 2, 4 times negative 1 is 1, and 4 times nothing is nothing. Equation 2, I'm going to multiply the whole thing by 3. That's now going to give me, let's just get rid of that, that's, that's poor notation. Okay. So, multiplying the whole thing through by 3, I'm going to have x plus 2y is going to equal, and be careful here, 30. So now we're back to them without the, um, the problematic uh, fractions. So again, we've got the choice here. What I could do, I could make y the subject of the top one. So I could say equation 1, y is equal to 2x. Okay, And that makes sense, doesn't it? If I add y to both sides, y equals 2x. So in the second equation, x plus 2y. Well, y is 2x, so I'm going to have 2 lots of 2x is equal to 30. x plus 2 lots of 2x is 5x equals 30. x is equal to 6. And then all I've got to do is sub that back in. So this one looks nice. 6 plus 2 lots of y is 30. So 2y is equal to 24. Just subtracting that 6 on both sides. And y is equal to 12. I could have used elimination there. If I wanted to do elimination, what's, let's use elimination on it. So we've got 2x minus y is equal to 0. And we've got x plus 2y is going to equal 30. Let's, let's double equation 1 and make the y's the same. So it's going to be 4x. And then we're going to have, what are we going to have on here? Uh, 4x plus, uh, sorry, minus... 2y, okay, so minus 2y, and then we're going to have now is equal to 0. So all I've done is double that top one, multiply the whole thing by 2. We'll leave this one alone and just write it like so. Now, adding these two will make these two disappear. Minus 2y plus 2y disappears. So let's add these. 5x is equal to minus 2y plus 2y is nothing. 0 plus 30 is 30. 5x equals 30 x equals 6. So putting it back in this one, or any one, this one, same one, 
if x is 6, 6 plus 2y is 30, 24 equals 2y, y equals 12. So we've seen in a short tutorial, and this should really be recapping, you should be very, very fluent with this as you'll be using it so frequently. Again, if these come up to be non-integer values, you just have to deal with that and keep it in terms of fractions. Keep exact fractions. Um, so, for example, I would have changed this one into fractions, doing it in my head. I wouldn't want to work with a decimal. So let's go through what we would do with each one, and then we'll, we'll call it uh, a day there, because the extended tutorial and your prior knowledge should see you through. So I'll talk you through my strategy on this one. Um, we'll look at this one right here. I would either make x the subject and say that x is 4 plus 2y, or I'd simply multiply the top one by 4 and use elimination. This one here, I would either get the x's as 10s or the y's as 6 and then use elimination. For one here as well, I'd make the middle ones into 20s and add them together. This one here, we can simply subtract downwards. The y's are already the same. So, subtracting downwards and eliminate. This one here, I'd be inclined to say, well, y is 2 minus 5x and use substitution and put it back in there. Alternatively, I could just multiply the top one by 3 and subtract downwards and eliminate because the y coefficients would be the same. On this one, I would double the bottom one and cancel out with the y's. 4y, negative 4 and plus 4 would go. I would double the top one here and then eliminate. Double the top one and eliminate. Um, that would probably be the best one on this. This one will just go. I'd look to convert that into a fraction and that into a fraction more than likely to help with my arithmetic, but it's entirely up to you. This one, I'd multiply the top one by, uh, by 3 to get 15s. Top one on this one, multiply it by 5, get the 10x is the same. On this one, what can we go into? We can go into 24s with the 3 and the 8. We can go into 35s here and eliminate. I would multiply this top one by 3. That's going to get me 18x's. On this one, I'd just multiply the bottom one by 4 and eliminate. The plus and the minus will kill the y's. And then we've looked at these. So that's a brief overview. You can either eliminate by making the coefficients in front of either the x's and y's the same. You subtract if the signs are the same, you add if the signs are different, or you can make one of them the subject of the equation and substitute it in, which has far uh, more benefit in terms of uh, non-linear. So these are all the linear ones. As we progress, we will look at the non-linear with a linear.